aircrafts fly at very high altitude. This is to prevent uh, the aircraft flying into bad weather where there's a lot of turbulence and also it is economical for aircraft to fly at high altitude because less fuel is consumed at high altitude. Also chances of heating or flying into mountains and obstacles at high altitude is not, um, those chances are minimal. It is for this reason that a good uh, pressurization system is needed for an aircraft to enable human survival because at high altitudes the air pressure is low for human survival. In this video we're going to be looking at uh, aircraft pressurization system. So welcome. Pressurization system um, is provided by the air conditioning system of an aircraft, particularly the air cooling system of an aircraft that provides the pressurization system. Pressurization is basically sort of pumping air into the aircraft and as the air is allowed to go into the aircraft cabin, the pressure inside the air cabin or the aircraft cabin increases up to a level that is suitable for human survival. We look at the major terms or the terms that are found uh, in a pressurization system. The first term is aircraft altitude. Aircraft altitude is that uh, altitude that an aircraft, the level at which the aircraft is flying uh, relative to the sea level. So where it's, a, it's the altitude where the aircraft is physically, the, is physically flying, that is the aircraft altitude. The cabin altitude, the cabin altitude and like the aircraft altitude, this is the pressure, the equivalent of the pressure that is inside the aircraft cabin. The aircraft itself can be flying at 40,000 feet, but the pressure inside the cabin altitude, of, the pressure inside the cabin of an aircraft is that similar to that of 7,000 feet. So that is cabin altitude. Ambient pressure is the pressure surrounding, the immediate pressure surrounding the aircraft. At the particular aircraft altitude where the aircraft is flying, the air, the air pressure surrounding that area is the ambient pressure. Differential pressure. The differential pressure is the pressure difference between the aircraft cabin and the ambient pressure that the outside the aircraft. That is the differential pressure. The aircraft rate of change. This is the rate of change of altitude of an aircraft. As it climbs up, the rate at which it's climbing or the rate at which it is descending, that is the aircraft rate of change. Then the last term that we're looking at, we're going to look at is the cabin rate of change. Cabin rate of change is the rate at which the pressure inside the aircraft cabin is changing. Can it, be, can, it can be 500 feet per minute or 300 feet per minute and uh, descending as well. The rate at which the pressure inside the cabin is changing, that is going up and going down and going down, that is the cabin rate of change. Next we look at the main requirements for our pressurization system. A good pressurization system should be able to maintain the cabin altitude at about 8,000 feet. This is, the, this is the cabin altitude that is comfortable for human survival. Beyond this, uh, it is not uh, possible. Some challenges will be maybe experienced by the cabin occupants beyond 8,000 feet. So a good altitude for human survival is 8,000 feet and below. So a good pressurization system should be able to maintain cabin altitude at 8,000 feet going down. The next requirement for a cabin pressurization system is the cabin rate of change. A good pressurization system should be able to control the cabin rate of change. A climbing rate, a comfortable climbing rate should not exceed 500 feet per minute and a comfortable descent rate should not exceed 300 feet per minute. Uh, this is achieved through proper sealing of the aircraft cabin. Uh, the aircraft cabin should be sealed properly. There should, no, there should be no leaks at all uh, to, uh, to enable the air pressure inside the cabin to leak outside. So uh, 
a good pressurization system for a good pressurization system to work the aircraft should be properly sealed the aircraft cabin should be properly sealed an outflow valve an outflow valve controls the rate at which air is allowed to flow outside the cabin the rate at which air is allowed to flow the outside the cabin is allowed is uh, is controlled through the outflow valve so these two enables us to achieve the two requirements that we've mentioned above next we look at the main components that are found uh, for a good pressurization system a good pressurization system should have a pressure controller a pressure controller sends the signal to the outflow valve to regulate it on uh, how far it should open or uh, how which amount of air it should allow to go out so the outflow valve gets this signal from the pressure controller the main function of the pressure controller is to send the signal to outflow valve to control its opening and its closing the outflow valve the outflow valve as we've already mentioned allows air to leave out to flow out of the cabin and thus controlling the air pressure inside the cabin safety valve a safety valve prevent excess um, differential pressure uh, the difference between the inside in between the cabin of an aircraft and outside the ambient pressure should not exceed a particular limit so the safety valve prevent the excess differential pressure a negative relief valve function of a negative relief valve is to prevent the cabin being at a negative pressure compared to the outside there's a limit it can only go about negative 0.5 psi beyond this a negative relief valve open to relieve the air pressure so that the cabin will not be at a negative pressure compared to the ambient air that is outside the final component is the indicators and this depends on the particular on a given aircraft we have different indicators uh, the indicators indicates what's uh, what's going on it indicates the position of the outflow valve it indicates the rate at which the aircraft uh, cabin is climbing or descending it also indicates the cabin differential pressure and indicates the aircraft altitude on some aircraft next we look at this diagram here where i'll try to explain how the system works so this this axis indicates uh, the aircraft altitude basically it indicates the, the altitude and this is the length of um, the time let's say uh, flight time is indicated by this side now this is the rate is a climb rate of an aircraft the physical aircraft climb rate from the way from the time it's uh, from takeoff to cruise and descent so this is the climb rate an aircraft takes off of, this is a start field it climbs up to 34,000 feet it cruises at 34,000 feet and then it descends up to the landing field notice uh, the aircraft is flying at 34,000 feet and the air pressure is 3.62 psi this is not sufficient for human survival as we've mentioned before a good cabin pressurization should maintain the pressure at 8,000 feet which is equivalent to 10.991 PSI. This is comfortable for human survival. So as the aircraft climbs, the cabin of an aircraft also climbs at a rate of 500 feet per minute up to a level up to 8,000 feet, up to a condition that is equivalent to that of 8,000 feet. It cruises there and then as the aircraft descends, the cabin altitude descends as well at a rate of 300 feet per minute up to the elevation of the landing field so the difference between the where the altitude at which the aircraft is cruising and the cabin altitude is what we call pressure differential as you can see the cabin stroke ambient differential pressure you can see where the the pressure at the pressure at the level which the aircraft is cruising is 3.62 and the cabin altitude pressure is 10.91 so the difference between these two is 7.29 which is the cabin differential pressure oh uh, 500 feet I and mean, you remember from the requirements we mentioned about the pressurization system this should not be exceeded otherwise if the the climb rate and the descent rate if is exceeded 
passengers or the cabin occupant will start to experience some discomfort around the ears and this is not uh, a desirable thing that is why a good pressurization system should be able to maintain this climb rate should not exceed 500 feet per minute and a descent rate should not exceed 300 feet per minute so i hope you've enjoyed the video this is what we had for you today if you haven't subscribed to the channel kindly we request you to click the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so that uh, you'll always be the first person to be notified whenever we post a new video Thank you.